is Perry, a 2,000 point scorer. We are ready to rock from Lubbock, Texas. Somebody's got to go home with the loss today, King. Something's got to give. Both these teams 2 0 in the conference. So Tyler Perry will control off of the tip. Kicked out of bounds by Tucson. Shot clock at 20. Great crowd on hand. United Supermarkets Arena on the campus of Texas Tech. It holds 14,000. Can't find an empty uh, seat. Cam Carter finds the best. And that's where he is at his best. Getting downhill. Cam Carter is special. Texas Tech starting lineup at the bottom of your screen. Pop Isaacs on the far left. We will be talking about him a lot tonight. With the basketball and the lob, Washington gathers it and goes to Tucson. Williams working on Kassan. He's a Swiss Army knife, can do just about everything, and powers his way to the hoop and gets two to fall. And right there, Darion Williams is a guard. He is not a four, but he's only 6'6". Going against David Kassan, who's about 6'9", 6'10". He posts them up. That's really impressive right there. Kassan with the basketball offensively. He has been a wrecking ball lately for Kansas State. Averaging 12 points a game, shooting 62%. And for Texas Tech, on this side of things, they have to be able to block out. Kansas State plays two bigs, and they crash the glass hard. They have to be able to gang rebound, as Coach Mack likes to call it. Washington, the seven-footer, working against McNair. Another seven-footer fall away, denied by McNair. And right there, Will McNair known more for his offensive ability, getting a good stop on Warren Washington. Tyler Perry going to try to get started. Washington rips the board. Isaac slashes to the hole. Floater, too strong. Gets his own rebound. Second block of the night for McNair. But cleaning up the mess is Washington. And Warren Washington has been playing excellent basketball. He's averaging 15 in conference play, and he's doing more. And part of the reason is, uh, Coach Max said he's starting to work on his game more than he ever has. That's why you're seeing him make moves down low on the block. Carter tried to thread the needle out of play. They're going to say it was last touched by Texas Tech. Shot clock will be at 16 when we restore order. Kaluma, the transfer from Crate. The shot making ability has really been embraced here by Coach Jerome Tang in Kansas State. To the hole he goes. Too strong. Shot clock violation. So Texas Tech first year head coach Grant McCaslin won a championship in the NIT at North Texas. Did a great job on the junior college level, won a championship there. And King McClure, he coached you for five years when he was a Baylor. Uh, he's just a winner. Every single place that he has gone to, he wins. And that's part of that Coach Drew coaching tree. And you got Jerome Tang on one side, Grant McCaslin on the other. These guys are high-level coaches, and they're finally getting their opportunities to be, step out there and shine. They're doing a great job. Deep three, in off the bench is McMillan. Too short. Rebound by Walton. The crowd is feeling it, ready to erupt. McMillan can't give him a reason. Ball is knocked out of bounds. Fighting to save it is Williams. Ball will go to Kansas State. We get a look at their head man, Jerome Tang. The coach of the year last year led the Wildcats to an Elite Eight in his first year as a head coach. Another guy, King, who you know pretty well. Hey, saw a lot of success last season. They they had a tremendous team on a great run. But, you know, one thing I'll say about both of these coaches playing for these guys, they are outstanding men. Yes, they're good coaches, but they are outstanding men. They are leadership. They are, their leadership, the way that I look up to both of these guys, I, I hold them in a very high regard. 
King McClure playing for these guys. Five years the two of them spent together under Scott Drew at Baylor. Kassan banging with Washington. Short rebound Walton. As you can see early, the referees are letting them play. Very physical on the block right there. Kassan might have got fouled, but the referees are letting them play. I like it. And Toussaint trying to go downhill. He wants it. Extra pass up and finished by Jennings is off the mark. But he'll go to the free throw line. And right there you see Joe Toussaint getting into the lane. That is one area where he is so hard to contain. Keeping him out the paint. And when he gets to the paint, he can hit you with his body and get a jump or get a floater. But his vision, he can also find teammates like we saw just now. Robert Jennings, one of the few holdovers that stayed at Texas Tech. A lot of folks trying to get him in the portal. But he decided to stay at Texas Tech. He's a guy that has a lot of strength in the post. And we saw him banging away there early getting these free throw opportunities he just plays with the motor and that's what coach Mack talked to me about when he specifically talked about Robert Jennings it was once we get him to buy in and play as hard as he can every single possession then he will see success and I think he's starting to see it he's, his minutes are starting to go up especially with the injury that happened uh, early in the season but with Robert Jennings when he's out there when he's playing hard playing with the motor Coach Mack loves him, and his minutes continue to increase. Backdoor, McNair high off the glass, can't finish. Rebounds, bobbled around, knocked out of bounds. It'll stay here, crowd doesn't like it. Texas Tech up 6-2. We'll step aside to take a break. They are tough. They want to instill toughness within their teams, and both of them will get after you. I've been, honestly, I've been the guy who's received more. Honestly, I'm sorry to see more from Coach Tang than I did from Coach Mack. Uh, Coach Tang was the one who was really chewing me out more so. Coach Mack and I had a different type of relationship where he really wasn't going after me like that. But Coach Tang would, he, he said some things to me before that, that will stick to me for the rest of life. <laughs> but I love both of these guys to death. Cam Carter flips it up. Coach Tang probably didn't like that. Shot is off the mark. So six to two early on here from Lubbock. Pop Isaacs will trigger. And here's Joe Toussaint. Toussaint takes advantage of the screen. Finds Isaacs who takes advantage of the beautiful look. Pop Isaacs averaging 24 in the last four. The way he is shooting the ball as of recent, you have to know where he is at all times. To overhelp that much and leave the corner wide open with a great shooter, Unacceptable. Isaacs leads the Red Raiders in shooting and scoring. He's got 24 points last game, 21 before that. Here he is again looking for some more action. Puts it in first gear. Slows it down. Toussaint finds the edge. Picks up his dribble. Here's the tray from Williams. Off the front of the iron. Lob pass to McNair, can't find the handle. Ball will go to Texas Tech. And let's take a look at this last three by Pop Isaacs. Joe Toussaint, we talked about how hard it was for him to keep him out the paint. But Finster loads over too quickly, and right there it's a two-on-one. If he doesn't step over, it's a layup. But that is a great find from Joe Toussaint, passing up a floater to get a wide-open three for a guy right now who is shooting 52 from the three in the last four games, you have to know where Pop Isaacs is. And he'll get busy from behind the arc. He shot 112 on the season, has made 36. Penetration, drops it off for Walton, who travels. So the North Carolina transfer commits a turnover. We haven't seen too many of them this season for Texas Tech doing a great job taking care of the basketball. Turned it over just four times in their win against Oklahoma State. And for Tech, when Joe Toussaint comes out the game, I think it's very, very important for Pop Isaac to really be able to hold it down at that point guard position and to create plays for, team, for his teammates. He's better off the ball, but they really only have one true point guard on this team, and that is Joe Toussaint. Kansas State shooting 14%. 14 minutes left in the first half. Perry operates. 
and five on the shot clock. Kaluma oh. takes the shot at it and knocks it down. I'm a big Arthur Kaluma fan. I think he has game. Yes, at times he is a ball stopper, but I think he has so much talent and so much potential. Isaacs draws a crowd. Step back for an open three. And that'll be a foul. He will go to the free throw line and shoot three. Now take a look at this last three right here. Off the pick. Nobody steps over. Arthur Kaloum with the two on one on the backside. Well, he has been shooting the ball at a high level. And right there, you have to step up. All right, Super Tuesday, a doubleheader. Number five, Tennessee hosting Florida in Knoxville. That's at 7 Eastern. And then Hunter Dickinson, number three, Kansas, are in Stillwater to take on Oklahoma State. Both games over on ESPN. You can always find them on the app. Uh, Tennessee, Dalton Connect. How about 36 today? <laughs> that man right there is filthy. He gets buckets. 36. Probably one of the best transfer guards in all of America that really nobody talks about. He needs to get more recognition, but the kid is a talent. Carter. Hassan tried to climb the ladder, couldn't get it. Out of bounds, last touch by Kansas State. Uh, we've seen a little bit too much sloppiness from Kansas State with the basketball. They're throwing passes that aren't really there. If it's not 100% sure, you shouldn't be throwing that pass just like right there. We've seen Finister have two bad turnovers. You have to be able to take care of the ball against a really good Texas Tech defense. Four turnovers early committed by the Wildcats. Toussaint, downhill to two. Jerome Tang having words with the officials. Saying him in College Station. Well, they're feeling it here in Lubbock early. Their team is up 14 to 5. Just an incredible atmosphere for a college basketball game on a Saturday afternoon. Kaluma directs traffic. The Creighton transfer drops it off for Kassan. This is the passing that Coach Tang wants to see, and that's the result he wants as well from Cam Carter. And, and that right there was the best offensive possession by Kansas State so far. Off the pick and roll, they made the one more because it was a miss at disadvantage on the backside. The ball movement was incredible in that possession. Isaacs. Weaves his way to the hole. We've got an offensive foul. Let's take a look at this ball movement. Off the pick and roll, they got what they wanted. Arthur Kaluma hits the pocket pass. Well, right now, because they load up, it's a two-on-one -on, on the backside. Tyler Perry swings the one more, makes the right decision. Cam Carter knocks it down. Good ball movement. Coach Tang would love that, and they need more of that. You saw Coach Tang there. He said, this environment, United Supermarkets Arena in Lubbock, it's as tough as it gets in the Big 12, and that is saying something. This team down by six, looking to cut into that lead early. 12 minutes remaining in the first half. McNair, a seven-footer from Philadelphia, puts it on the floor. Five on the shot clock. Ball is poked away. Last touch by Walton, but then it went off the leg of McNair. Another turnover for Kansas State. That is five on the afternoon. The lead for Texas Tech is six. We'll learn those from King. That's, that's his fault. Yeah, he, he definitely didn't learn those moves from me. You know, Coach Tang used to always think he was the smoothest guy in the room, no matter where he was. You know, it's not always true, but he thought he was the smoothest guy in the room. But right there, he's complaining about the physicality. I mean, the two arms in the back. He said that it's been multiple times where the Texas Tech defender has put two arms in the back. This team trails by six. Red Raiders looking to extend the lead. Shot clocks at eight. Pop Isaacs leading the team in scoring, starting to get busy. Step back, Trey. Opportunity for Kansas State. Tyler Perry drops it off for McNair. 
The seven-footer from Philadelphia goes to Cam Carter, who has become a weapon this season. If you notice, every single time Cam Carter comes off the ball screen, they go under. They're more worried about him getting downhill than they are knocking down the three-point shot. Barry tried to get it to Kassan, taken away. Six turnover for the Wildcats. My eyes seem like he's in a little bit of pain. Clutching on to that left arm. He will get assistance from the Texas Tech bench, but it's clear he is in a lot of pain. Yeah, let's take a look at this still, see if we see anything. Step back for Joe T. Knocks it down from the Bronx, New York to Lubbock, Texas. Yeah, well, with Pop Isaac being out, not really knowing what is going on, Joe Tucson, Joe T. has to be huge and has to be able to will his team in order for them to get this victory. Cam Carter working on Chance McMillan just into uh. the game. And Carter makes him pay. Cam Carter has gotten so much better. Yes, he is not shooting the three great. But he is so versatile within his game. He can get to the cup, but also loves to get to the mid-range right there. He's just a more confident scorer this season. 23 points in their win against West Virginia, 15 in the second half. Here's Chance McMillan trying to answer. Carter, skying for the board. Kaluma throws it right into the hands of a stretched out Washington. Toussaint downhill. Absorbs contact, no call. McNair with the basketball after the body check. And we've seen McNair get about two or three blocks tonight. He's doing a good job going vertical, not putting his hands down off of the drive in the contest. Gassan loses the handle. Another turnover for the Wildcats. Seven-point advantage for Texas Tech. Toussaint, the floor general. Weaves in and out of traffic, picks up his dribble. We've got a whistle. And right there, the pace off of the ball screen. He snakes it because he sees where his defender is that's guarding him. The pace that he plays with makes him so hard to guard because you can... Bench, who you don't see on there right now, is Pop Isaacs. And he's not on the floor either. We can only assume that he is in the back in the locker room area receiving some sort of treatment for that left arm. I mean, such a talent. And you hope that he comes back into this game and it's nothing serious. Jennings tried to thread the needle for Toussaint. Kickball by Gassan will stay here. Eight game win streak for Texas Tech. And they're 9 0 at home. It's been quite the advantage here. And this is a hard place to play. I mean, partially because their their fans are they make it really, really, really tough. And in, in a sense of their student section is ruthless. <laughs> you don't know what you are going to hear when you run out. They do not care. They will talk to you the whole time. And don't 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 come out here by yourself before the team comes out just to get some extra shots. You are going to hear everything. And I've heard a lot of things, particularly I've been called a queen so many times, princess so many times. I mean, that's normal. Be, be, be more original, and that's easy. But I've also been heard and called some things that I probably can't repeat on air. But this is a hard place to play. I don't think I have much success in this building. Students officially come back on Monday, but you can hear them. They are here on Saturday. The sixth man is alive and well, and the shot clock has expired. That is another turnover early on in this game, the ninth for Kansas State. And you look at the other side of that, Texas Tech has committed just two themselves. Well, Kansas State averages 14 turnovers a game, so to have nine in the first half with eight minutes to go, that's really uncommon from this Wildcat team. But credit to Texas Tech. They are pressuring, they are getting them to make uncharacteristic plays. They are loading up. Passing lanes aren't clear. They're doing a good job. Really active on the defensive side. Kerwin Walt comes it to Williams, who goes on the block to Jennings. Nice ball movement now to Tucson. He'll have to move. Three on the shot clock. Runs into trouble and travels. 
Texas Tech now, a two minute and 34 second scoring drought. But you hear the crowd, that's for this guy. Pop Isaacs back into the game. And that's what happened earlier. And we don't know what happened. But I'm glad to see him back in the game. It might have been his funny bone. I don't really know. I don't want to speculate, but glad to see him back in the game. He's a tough kid. 17 to 10 is the score. Three turnovers for Kansas State in the last two minutes and 30 seconds as McMillan and Tyler Perry tango. Fast will get a better response. Problem solved. Grammarly can make all the difference in your professional success. Download at Grammarly.com today. D here in our college basketball studios in overtime. Over on ESPN and College Station, Tyrese Radford to the rack. You can catch the final half minute over there right now. He Zubin and the fellas, thanks a lot. Pete Souza with King McClure. On your left, you see Jerome Tang and Grant McCaslin on the right. While we were away, King, we saw two tightly knit teams and huddles talking things over during the break. And you're familiar with both these coaches in that family-like environment. Yeah, I think that shows what they stand for. You know, tightness, family, together. I mean, after a scuffle like that, well, not even like a scuffle, but after... Tensions uh, were raised. Yeah, tensions were raised come together and do it as one. I love what both of these coaches stand for. We just saw Chance McMillan glide to two. He leads the Red Raiders in bench points, averaging just over nine on the year. Kaluma, nice pass for McNair, who gets the call and falls through for it. A hush over the crowd here at United Supermarkets Arena. All right, let's take a look at it. I think he had to be Ooh. I think that might have been a that might have been a charge, Pete. Yeah, that's a charge, Pete. He was set by rule. When the second foot leaves, the second foot plants, the defender has to be set. And I think that Pop Isaacs was set right there. I don't know if I agree with that one hundred percent. I mean, you told me you were gonna go easy on the officials today. <laughs> and here you go. <laughs> Listen, I have the utmost respect for these three guys. And shout out to James Duke. It's his first Big 12 conference game. He's the one that made the call right there. First Big 12 conference game. And I respect those guys. They do a great job. Curlin Walton, who's played many college basketball games, but has found his role here coming off the bench at Texas Tech. Knocks down a three. Crowd engaged. 14,000 strong. Perry going to try uh -huh. and quiet him and does. That's just such a big time shot. If you were the big in this pick and roll, the defending big, and Tyler Perry is coming off, you have to step up. He doesn't really want to drive. He wants to pull up for three like he just did. The backside defending big has to be able to step up off of that ball screen. McMillan towards the middle of the floor. Pumps it to Tucson. Tucson really in control of this ball club. Step back. Teardrops, no good. Here come the Wildcats. They have made five of their last six shots. With ten turnovers, the shooting has kept them in it. Perry spins. Foul on the floor on Tucson. Right, take a look at this Tyler Perry three. He wants to shoot the tray. He does not want to drive, but all right here. Warren Washington has to step up on that. You cannot be that far back. But because Kansas State ran into the ball screen and it wasn't just stationary, they ran into it, made him move side to side. It was hard for him to really be able to step up. McNair, crowd wants him to shoot it. He thought better of it. Kaluma, you know he'll pull the trigger, but loses the basketball. 11th turnover for the Wildcats. You, you can't over-dribble, and I think there's been too many times Kansas State has over-dribbled against this Texas Tech defense. Williams threw it right into the Kansas State bench. And looking at Coach Tang right there on that shot, you said it, Pete. Coach Tang is telling Kaluma, shoot the ball. 
Don't try to over dribble and try to get by your defender when there's active hands on the weak side. Shoot the ball. He's a good shooter. And the Wildcats today from long distance are three of five. And here is Kaluma working on Walton, whose defense has gotten so much better. Oh, man. Perry. Cold. And, and right there, it started on the baseline. They ran the floppy action for Tyler Perry to choose which side he wanted to run off of. Came from the baseline, curled the down screen, got his feet set, knocked it down. And he is a rhythm shooter. If he gets hot, it could be trouble for the Red Raiders. He's two of three from beyond the arc today. Walton going to try to answer. Too strong. Kaluma flies for the rebound. Here come the Wildcats. And Cam the Carter State, leads the charge. The Kansas State, you got to find Tyler Perry right now. You have to be able to find him. He's hot. He's hit two threes back to back. You have to be able to locate where he is. Here comes Perry. He wants it. Step back uh -oh. from deep. Uh oh. Knocks it down. Uh oh. He is wet. The game is tied. And when he heats up, it can be a long night for the defense. And he is doing a tremendous job getting separation on his shots to be able to get them off cleanly. 9-0 Wildcat run. They have made four of their last four shots. Texas Tech hadn't scored in almost three minutes. Nice backdoor pass by Washington to Tucson. He gets accosted. No call. And a lot of contact down there off of the drive. Potentially, probably got fouled. But they're letting them play. Carter out of traffic, walks the tightrope, Perry controls. Kaluma hoists one. Big three for Kansas State. They now lead for the first time this afternoon, 25 to 22. Uh, Kansas State has taken the lead because of this shooting. They have a 12-0 run right now on a 15-3 run over the last 331. The, the turnovers are the only thing that's keeping them King from really taking this one away. Yeah, well, Kansas State has done a better job uh, towards the, the latter half of the first half of taking care of the ball and getting shots up. When they get shots up, they are knocking it down very, very efficiently, shooting 56 from the field. But when you have nine turnovers, that right there will not get it done. Pop Isaacs goes to the basket, can't get it to fall. And you know, if you're Texas Tech right now, I know Pop Isaac might be dealing with a, a minor injury but he's the guy that you need for answers. You can look for it for answers right now. Can he answer the question off the mark? And Cam Carter looks to run. Here's Perry with the hot hand. Oh. He's not shy. Oh, oh. the Goodness. quick trigger. The three. What's crazy is it was a one on three in transition. The confidence that you have to have to take that shot as a basketball player is through the roof. 15 to nothing run right now for Kansas State. McNair. A lot of contact down low. Kaluma absorbs the contact off the window and good. But I love the consistency right there from the refs. They let it go on one side and they let it go on both on the other side as well. That is consistency. That's what you love to see out of referees. Texas Tech has it scored in four and a half minutes. King, what do they do just to get a bucket? But right here, it has to be Tucson or Isaacs. I mean, Isaacs might be dealing with the injury, so I would more so go Tucson, but not just Tucson in his ability to score, but to be able to find teammates. Chance McMillan's off the mark, and here come the Wildcats again. I think more so than anything, you have to be able to get a stop. It's when you have to really buy into what Coach Mack teaches, his philosophies, and really lock down to get a stop right now because Tyler Perry's on the roll. We've got a whistle away from the ball. And it looks like early indication is a foul on Camp Carter, swinging the arm. Check that on Kaluma, swinging the arm. And I like this sub right here. You put Kern Walton in the game for Chance McMillan. Chance McMillan is a really good scorer, but tonight is not his night. We've seen Kern Walton already hit one. He spaces the floor, and now when you drive, if you help off of him, the ball will get delivered and it will be a bucket. Texas Tech needs to stop oh. the bleeding. Washington going to try to do it. He'll go to the free throw line. Now, this is impressive. At seven foot, as a big man, a lot of bigs cannot move like this. 
off of the bounce, being able to get to where you want to go, have the body control to get into your defender and try to go all the way from the three-point line to drive, that's impressive right there by Warren Washington. Coach McCaslin told us his feel for the game is as good as it gets. Touch just off there. And the biggest thing that Coach Max said when it came to Warren Washington was that he, he doesn't love working out on his game, right? And that's just some guys. Some guys do not necessarily love to work out. But he has started to really, really buy in. He's starting to see success, and he's doing it more now than ever. And he's starting to turn the corner on working out and wanting to improve his game. And he's improved it tremendously. His passing has been so good recently. Toussaint tried to step into a foul. No call. Five on the shot clock. The fifth year from deep off the mark. Here comes Carter. He has become a weapon for this Kansas State team. Passing and scoring. You see him pass there. Long rebound goes to Perry. Perry, another three. That one almost hit the roof. Can't fall. Kaluma battles for the board. On the floor is McMillan. Carter has possession. His tray is good. And that was all set up right there by Darrell Colbert, a really athletic big that comes off the bench, the sophomore. He plays hard. He kept the ball alive with multiple efforts. That is what you want to see in order to gain minutes and gain the trust of your coach. The run is 23-3 to over the last 6.43. Texas Tech hasn't scored in almost seven minutes. Things can change fast in college basketball. Toussaint tied up with Perry. And Texas Tech finally gets the foul they were looking for. There is Coach Grant McCaslin. Set to check into the game. Dorian Finister. There's Coach McCaslin, his old running mate, Coach Jerome Tang. These guys coached together for five years under Scott Drew. Interesting adjustments to be made here at halftime, especially for Texas Tech. Toussaint raises off the heel. I mean, Tech isn't getting bad looks. That right there was a good shot, wide open from a miscommunication on the defensive side from Kansas State. Toussaint got a good look, just didn't fall. Red Raiders two for their last 14. Perry, he's been hot. Wide right, long rebound for Carter. Can't get it up in time, and halftime is upon us. You talk about momentum shifts. We head into halftime with the Wildcats on a 20 to nothing run, and it has worked out very well. And starting off in the first half, or the second half, the Texas Tech needs answers, and more so on the defensive side. I mean, they still only hold, they held Kansas State to 33 points in the first half. That's not bad. But they have to be able to continue to get stops when they weren't a 20 0 run in the, in the end of the first half. I know the halftime of with Grant McCaslin and, and the Red Raiders, I, I knew it wasn't pretty. Here comes Joe Toussaint. Quickly across half court, inside to Washington. You already see the ball movement's gotten better. Washington likes what he sees against McNair. Uh -huh. Jump up, finishes. And that's where he's gotten better. He's just continued to work on his game. He wasn't doing that last year. One-on-one -on -one in the post, he was never, ever known as a post scorer. More of a rim protector, lob threat. But right there, one-on-one -on -one in the post, good left-hand hook. Carter dances into the lane, finds Kassan. The tray is good. He has been on fire of late, averaging 14 points and 10 rebounds, shooting 62% of the floor coming into today. Yeah, well, if you're Texas Tech, you are living with that shot. I mean, Kassan is not a three-point shooter. He is trying to do all his work inside the paint. You're living with that. And right there, Warren Washington has been impressive. The body control to put it on the floor, hit the man with the Euro step, at seven foot, that is hard to do. 
was one of the best big men in the transfer portal in the offseason coming over from Arizona State. Perry runs into trouble and Toussaint gets it to Carter. Cam Carter. Jumper is ice cold. Just so smooth. He's a three-level scorer, but he's not shooting a three well. But getting to his mid-range pull-up, getting to the rim, that is where he's been at his best this season. Five of six on the day shooting for Carter. Toussaint bulldozes ahead, absorbs the contact from McNair, and will go to the free throw line. Big's doing work early. If you are Texas Tech, you are living with this shot. Look where Williams is. He's in the paint. He's not even worried about this shot. But on the opposite side, look at the Euro step. Look at the body control by a seven-footer to hard plant and go right back up over the other seven-footer in McNair. And Coach McCasin told us today that his feel for the game just his IQ is off the charts, and we're seeing it now early here in the second half. Yeah, I think the most underrated part of Warren Washington's game is his passing. I think that he has really, really good vision, and he just knows how to play the game of basketball. And when you add the low post scoring into his repertoire, he's really, really can be a tough cover. Toussaint looking to make good on the back end of his two free throws and does. So the lead has now been trimmed to 10. Crowd feeling a little bit of life here. I mean, at halftime, a guy asked me, a, a, a Texas Tech fan, when's the last time they scored? I said, I think it was around 2 o'clock. <laughs> Game started at 3 here. You get the idea. Perry off the screen. Too short. And, and right there, Kansas Kansas State could get the offensive board, and that, that is where they excel. I mean, they are top 25 in the country in offensive rebounds per game. But before that, the shot, the Tyler Perry three, you have to be up on that if you are Warren Washington. He has been too hot in this game for you to drop back in the coverage. We know it's wild card weekend. Monday night, super wild card weekend is capped off with the NFC matchup between Jalen Hurts and the Eagles, and Mike Evans and the Buccaneers. That'll be at 8 Eastern on ABC, ESPN, and ESPN Plus. Our megacast coverage also includes Peyton and Eli. That's on ESPN2. And our ESPN Deportes Spanish language version. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6 Eastern. You're an Eagles fan, huh? Come on, man. We're on the ropes. Are you okay? Uh, I'll tell you Monday night. <laughs> Isaacs, is he okay out of the locker room with that funny bone issue? Can't make it, but wow, McNair denies Washington. And here comes Kaluma out of the pack with the loose ball. Perry can't leave him alone. One of the rare miscues for him today. We'll head the other way. Well, as you can see, Tyler Perry was hot for a second there, but his last three or four threes he has not made. So the door now really feels like it's open for Texas Tech. Perry's cold. The lead is down to 10. And Washington has been pretty hot. Here's Pop Isaacs. He's looking to heat up. Finds Washington with the flush. And that right there was created by Washington's post pass. On the kick out, it made the defense have to play in a closeout. Pop Isaac drove the closeout. Two on one, made the right decision. Crowd is engaged. Kaluba from deep trickles out. Red Raiders with a chance to pounce here. Chance McMillan returns the favor. Seven oh run over the last one minute and thirty seconds here. Thirty eight to thirty three. The lead has been trimmed to five. The crap. As soon as he closes out, Pop Isaacs drives it hard. Boom. Finds the two on one on the backside, delivers it off to his big fella. Easy flush. Six points in the second half for the big fella. And the lead has been trimmed to five points.
Here's Ken Carter. Too many steps. So that's the 13th turnover of the game for the Wildcats. Remember, they committed 11 early ones in the first 10 minutes of the first half and then cleaned it up. But now, a little sloppy to start the second half. Yeah, Texas Tech being able to speed them up a little bit. Now, who will be able to provide answers for the offensive side for Kansas State? Nice pass by McMillan is picked off. Hassan drops it off for Perry. Loses his footing, but he's fouled first by McMillan. Chance McMillan will think it over. Didn't like it. Scott Drew enables them to have the freedom within being assistants to still be able to lead in different ways. I mean, Coach Tang was in charge of the defense. Coach Mack at times would be in charge of the offense. And he allows those guys to have a voice so that when they branch off and when they're at their own spots, they are successful because they know how to run a program and still allows them to be leaders even though they're assistants. I don't know, man. Talk like that, we might need to get you on a bench somewhere. I don't know about all that. Not with the way NIL is going. <laughs> Arthur Kaluma <laughs> off the mark. Not going well for him right now. 7-0 run for Texas Tech. Can Pop Isaacs and the boys extend it? He walks the tightrope, finds Williams, Brick. Washington, offensive board. He's on fire in the second half. And right there, just right place, right time. But the touch right afterwards. He has really, really great touch around the rim, and you see that. Oh, my goodness. Woo. He makes Kaluma work, but he finishes. And that's the talent right there that Kaluma continuously shows off of the drive, the up and under to finish over a seven-footer. The creativity, the skill level, that's a hard, high-level finish. Isaacs makes the extra pass. Williams to Walt. He gets Perry jumping and finishes, can't finish, and the rebound goes to Washington. His third offensive board of the second half. Coming out of the scrap is Kassan with the basketball. Perry picks up his dribble. Here's Dorian Finister. has got some space to work with. The floater's no good. Reset for Carter. Crosses over McMillan. He can't finish. Another board for Washington. Tech almost loses it. Possession is regained. Order restored. Pop Isaacs takes control. Is knocked to the floor by Finister. And that'll be a foul. And Isaacs, boy, continues to get banged up this afternoon. And he's so hard to contain because not only does he get low, but he looks for your off arm. So when you when he drives, his off arm is constantly looking to grab, to gain an advantage. And when he grabs with his off arm, no referee is going to see that. But he can get by his defender. With and without pop, the first eight minutes and two seconds, the team led 14 to 8. Next 10-52 without him, the Red Raiders were outscored 25 to 8. And hey, he's only one of shooting from the floor, one of seven shooting from the floor on the day, but it just shows the presence he has with this team. He's such a great scorer and he provides so much and his leadership is one of the biggest things that he provides for this Texas Tech team. Finister from New Orleans to the basket. A sophomore looking pretty good has been able to step up his game and get more playing time in the absence of Kez Glover and has taken good advantage. And you can tell that Coach Tang really trusts him because look who he's putting him on. He was guarding Pop Isaacs. Now, right now, now he's guarding Tucson. He's guarding the other team's best perimeter threat. That's a lot of trust to put in a guy who doesn't play significant minutes for you. Foul on Finister. That'll be his third. 
And this right here is a tough finish. Full speed. Chance McMillan does a great job going vertical, not bringing his arms down to allow the and one. But Finisher is playing well, and Coach Tang is a big trust guy. If you do things like this, play defense, make the right read, don't turn the ball over. I mean, he made a few in the first half. You can gain his trust, you can gain more minutes. He went 30 days without playing. And then the injury to Glover happened, and he's taking advantage of the opportunity. Seven-point advantage for Kansas State. Can Walton cut into it? Rims out. He has been cold today. Lamar Washington battles. Referees will talk it over, and we'll go with Kansas State. Another scoring drought right now. You see it on your screen. 239 for the Red Raiders and Grand McCaslin's team. But right, right, right there was a good look. Toussaint did a great job getting into the teeth of the defense. That's what you want to see. You want your team to get to the paint, get paint touches, and from the paint touches, kick out for threes. And Karen Walton, a guy who is shooting north of 50% from three, just missed an open look. But they got a good one based off of the Toussaint drive. Yeah, Walton, you mentioned 54% on the from beyond the arc is one of four today. 12.30 left here in the second half. Pete Souza alongside King McClure. King McClure, he played 64 Big 12 conference games. He knows what this action's all about. Kaluma barrels to the hole. Gets it to Carter. Clean look at a three. Rims out. McNair grabs the offensive board, has it poked away, and will stay here. And the number one thing right now for Texas Tech is they have to be able to block out. They have an extremely small lineup with Lamar Washington playing the four. And now you put Gasson in the game. I like what Coach Tang did. You put Gasson in the game for rebounding purposes. They're top 25 in the country when it comes to offensive rebounding. But now that you have a 6'3 guard guarding Gasson, now you can really take advantage of the offensive glass. Jump ball. Toussaint muscles it away from McNair, and it'll go to Texas Tech. I mean, just for the little guy, Toussaint, to get involved in that right there, that he, scrum. He's tough. He puts his nose in places, and he's a very, very, very tough guy from New York. Plays hard. Is what He's what you want in a point guard. Started his career at Iowa, then West Virginia, and here he is in Lubbock. Ooh. Spinning to the hole, floats it high off the heel. Lamar Washington is active. He gets aboard and finds Toussaint, who gets McNair in the air. McMillan out of the corner, comes up shy. Ball is back, and finishing is Lamar Washington. Now you want to talk about offensive rebounds. I said that Kansas State has the advantage, but right now the scrappiness of Texas Tech on the offensive glass was just on display. The crowd in Lubbock is energized, 14,000 strong. Their team has cut it to five. Gasson mm. puts a hush over the 14,000. He's improved to be able to make a jab, drive hard left with a 6'3 guard on you to shoot over the top of him to get a bucket. He couldn't do that last year. He's definitely improved. And Texas Tech on the offensive glass. This is the effort that... He just raves about how tough his son is, and you see it time and time again. He takes bumps, he takes bruises, and he's still out there to be able to play. And talking to Pop before the game, Pop Isaacson himself, he said he got stronger in the offseason, and now he's able to take some of those bumps and bruises that he couldn't take last season. Miscommunication will cost the Red Raiders there. Yeah, and back to Pop, he's one of seven shooting on the afternoon. But when he's in the game, his steam is still about plus 15 or 20. That shows you the impact he has just being on the floor. And it's because the other, other team puts so much respect on him. It frees up shots for his teammates. McNair, Philadelphia, his team leading by seven right now. Ball's batted out of bounds by Isaacs. His presence remains. Coach Grant McCasin in his first season at Texas Tech. 
trying to restore the program to recent prominence. Tyler Perry wishes he could have that one back in the first half, King. He has 12 points on five of seven from three, or excuse me, from four of six from three. And this half, he's 0 of two, and we just saw another turnover. No points. Yeah, but right there, he was looking opposite. He wasn't looking to score that basketball. You could tell by where his eyes were facing. He was looking to try to pass it, got a little too sped up, dribbled the ball off his foot. Toussaint bangs away off the glass, too strong. He has struggled as well. Two of 11 from the floor for Joe T. Ball stays right here. 30 seconds on the shot clock. It'll reset. Great fake by Isaacs. Another great fake, but we've got a foul on Perry. And you can tell right there, typically Pop Isaac shoots that. Off of the pump fake, he typically shoots this jumper. But right now, he is not feeling like himself. Doesn't even look to shoot that basketball. Looks to automatically drive. You can tell. Right now, he is not the normal Pop Isaacs. He's battling with something. Because he typically looks to shoot that off the pump fake in the separation. In two conference games, he has 24 points in his last outing against Oklahoma State and 21 against UT. He has cooled off this afternoon just six. Boy, he still draws a crowd though, doesn't he? McMillan slices to the basket. Nice oh. fake for him and an even better finish. That's a great take right there. And I thought McMillan was going to shoot this. Good skip pass right there by Pop Isaacs. Gets on the closeout, gets where he wants to. Takes his time, pump fakes, gets the contact. Good and one. And let's not forget, Chance McMillan, in the game against Texas, nine of his 11 points came in the second half. He has the ability to heat up quickly and to provide a scoring option for Texas Tech. The lead is at four. Crowd on its feet. Fouls on to South. Just his second. Boy, Toussaint is all over Tyler Perry. He's done a great job taking him out and making it tough. Whoa, Carter tried to climb the ladder for the acrobatic dunk. And now uh -oh. he tangos with Washington. Technical foul. It looks like they're going to get McNair with it. His tempers continue to flare. There's a lot happening right here. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, I get it. I mean, as a basketball player right there, Warren Washington, the way that Cam Carter swung on that rim, wrapped his leg around him, it's kind of disrespectful. And as a basketball player, yeah, you don't, you don't love that. Right there, I mean, I would have been upset as well. I, I wouldn't like that either. To swing around and put your leg around him, it, I get Warren Washington's frustration right there. Jerome Tang over the uh, shoulder of one of our officials. No free throws. But what was the call? The call was a foul, right? But the call was a foul on the lob. Shouldn't he be shooting? Neither team in the bonus. I guess they're going to call it a foul on the floor. And no technical. We'll search for official word on that. Meantime, Perry. Searching for his first bucket in the second half. Can't do it. Well, I guess because he didn't actually have the ball or have possession of it, I guess they have to call it on the ground. I guess that makes sense. Williams, easy to the hole, and is knocked away quickly by McNair. <laughs> 
Well, one of the big reasons that Kansas State charged out to that early lead was this young gentleman. 12 points on four of seven shooting in the first half. Second half, he has been ice cold king. And I think that's the impact that Joe Toussaint has on the game. Offensively, Joe Toussaint has not been great. But defensively, matching up with him, being able to control him and limit him, he's doing a good job. No limits on what Walton can do there. He drops it in. The lead is two. McNair hammers it home, quiets the crowd. Lead is back out to four. Isaacs draws two. Isaacs crosses over Perry, likes what he sees, with the left, gets the leader to fall. That's a high-level finish. Sold-out crowd here at United Supermarkets Arena, feeling it. Cam Carter says, quiet, please. Mm. We are seeing some high-level finishes from Duke. Looking for an unthinkable sweep of Duke, guys. All right, thanks a lot, fellas. We have got a rock fight here in Lubbock. 49 to 44. Kerwin Walton. Ball's knocked away by McNair. His fourth block of the afternoon. Coming out and making that play on the perimeter. Big for the Wildcats. Yeah, that was great awareness because that was a pretty draw up right there by Grandma Caslin. The misdirection into the double screen for Curran Walton, your best three-point shooter. But McNair sniffed it out and got the block. On offense. Isaacs oh, the pass. leaves it into the lane, tried to get it to Jennings. It is knocked away by the Wildcats. Crowd doesn't like it. It'll go to Kansas State. And if you're Robert Jennings right there, you have to secure that basketball. That should be two points. Pop Isaac puts it on a platter right there for you. Good pick and roll read right there by Pop Isaacs. And you have to be able to finish that and come away with two points. Points off turnovers, 12 for Texas Tech, 6 for Kansas State. A little bit of business for us to take care of. We talked about that scrum earlier here in the second half. It turned out that that was offsetting technical fouls. That's why there were no free throws. And because there was no possession of the basketball on the lob, it was a on-the-floor foul. Speaking of on-the-floor, Isaacs ends up there once again, but is quick to get picked back up by his teammates. Take a look at this. Tries to split the defense right there, but they reach in. He falls to the floor. By the, to the way, free throw line now. that's a guy, King, as you know. He had a hard time staying on the floor last year. A lot of yeah. injuries kept him off. Probably the best freshman in the Big 12 besides that. A lot of the injuries are popping up. But now we see Pop Isaacs is popping up all the time. No more injuries. Yeah, because he, he talked about it earlier when we came over here to the scores table and we had the conversation with him, and he continuously said, it's because I hit the weight room. I hit the weight room. I got stronger. He put a major emphasis on the weight room this offseason, and now you're seeing the injuries. He said you're able to play through some of them. He's able to play through some of the bumps that he wasn't able to play through last year. So credit to him for working on his game in the offseason, not just his game, but working on his body. Kaluma controls on the right wing. Nice pass to McNair, who lays it up and in. And that right there, just a great play. The swing to the backdoor screen on the opposite side. Toussaint picks it up and goes to Isaacs, who swings it to Williams. Back to Pop. Top of the key. Shot clock at 10. Off the screen from Washington. Too strong. Long rebound for Walton. 
He whips it to the right side. Toussaint shakes and fakes and finds Williams. Washington leads all scores for Texas Tech. Can't get it to fall. The hook looked nice. The finish didn't. Wow, nice look by Perry. McNair is hammered. Tyler Perry having trouble getting on the board, scoring in the second half, but that look right there and that vision, impeccable. And that's where he's improved the most. He's able to get into the paint and find his teammates, and off of the pick and roll, he's starting to make the right read time and time again. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. Let me tell you, from personal experience, it is a must-have for Big 12 fans. We've got three men's games on Tuesday night. TCU taking on Cincinnati, that's 7 Eastern. Then 14th ranked Baylor squared off against Kansas State. You're seeing them right now, that's at 8 Eastern. And then finally, 18th ranked BYU hosts Iowa State at 9 Eastern. If you're a Big 12 fan, there's really no, deba uh, no debate. You gotta have it. Texas Tech, they got to have a bucket right here, King. They are trailing by seven, coming up on five minutes left here in the game. Isaacs shimmies into the lane. Rebound McNair. And he's had a tough night. And he's getting some decent looks, but he's had a really tough night converting on those looks. A lot of contact, no call. McNair grabs the offensive board. Hassan, who's been quiet most of the afternoon, drops it off for Perry. with the kiss off the window. Right there, one-on-one. -on -one. Tyler Perry is a good scorer when it comes to using his body. He doesn't really have blow-by speed to get by defenders, so he does a great job with his body to have the body control to finish over bigger defenders. Clean look for Williams. He cashes in. Boy, did they need that. And they needed that. 55-49. to 49. What are you looking from from Texas Tech? Well, I want Toussaint with the ball. I want him with the ball, but I need him to be able to get to the bucket and get in the lane and create plays for others. Not necessarily about him scoring. If he can do that, then sure. But he's so dangerous when he gets paint touches and makes plays for his teammates. Tyler Perry with the basketball. One of five from the floor in the second half after being on fire in the first. Heads up wow. play by Carter to knock it off Pop Isaacs. Yeah, I've never seen that one before. That was my first time ever seeing that. Throwing the ball, knowing you're about to go back court, throwing the ball off of the defender in order to allow yourself to get back court to get the momentum. That's a high level play. Oof, and that almost was as well as the shot clock wound down. Perry tried to beat the buzzer. Crowd sitting on their hands here in Lubbock. You could hear a pin drop, and now you can hear size. Cam Carter floats it for a finisher who finishes. And right there, your Pop Isaacs off of the pass to Warren Washington. You either have to make a direction to go, but you cannot go back and forth and fake. That's why Warren Washington got confused and threw the turnover. Toussaint, the heartbeat of this team, keeps the Red Raiders alive. And that's what he has to do. The ball has to be in his hands, and he has to be able to create. They are at their best when Joe Toussaint is creating. Kaluma controls and drops it off for Carter. Carter slices and dices. Maybe forces the issue and loses the basketball. Washington grabs it and is fouled. Right here, if you're Pop Isaacs, all the faking, you have to choose a direction and go, but this is great execution on a two-on-one break. And on the other side, Tucson getting downhill. He plays so low that he's hard to keep out the paint. Good finish. 
So we travel the length of the floor as Texas Tech is now in the bonus. They are one of the best free throw shooting teams in the country, and they are 10 of 12 from the charity stripe today. You have to be able to knock down free throws right here. 235, down six. You knock down free throws, you have a chance. We've got another women's college basketball triple header for you tomorrow afternoon. It starts at 1 Eastern on ESPN, number 21, Florida State, hosting number 11, Virginia Tech. And then Angel Reese and number 7, LSU, and Kim Mulkey taking on Auburn. Finally, we cap the afternoon off with Tennessee and Texas A&M as the crowd. Not excited about that game, but excited about this one. And right there, that's just a mental lapse from Kansas State. You have to block out on free throw. Yeah, it's nothing. They got it right. I, I agree with that call right there. Williams can trim it to two and does. And Lubbock has come alive. Coach McCaslin rubs the back of his neck. He knows that this is going to get dicey down the stretch. And if you're K-State right now, I'm looking to go to Kaluma. Kaluma has Chance McMillan, McMillan on him, and I think Kaluma one on one against Kaluma against McMillan could cause problems for Texas Tech. Isaacs pops out and almost causes a problem for Kansas State. Tyler Perry. 0 from 3, 0 for 3 from 3. Too strong. Big rebound by Gassan. Carter, who has a quiet 15 points, regains possession. Inside of two minutes, 10 on the shot clock. Carter hoists it. In and out. Big rebound by Chance McMillan. I don't necessarily love the shot. Yes, he's hit three threes tonight, but he's only shooting 29% on the year. Don't love the shot right there by Cam Carter. And Williams draws another foul. Take a look at this right here. Like a tough angle to see from right there because McNair was in the way of the view. Williams, one of one from the free throw line. Caught two of two. In the season, he's an 85% free throw shooter. First in the Big 12 are the Red Raiders from the free throw line. There's a good reason why. We are tied at 57. The crowd engaged. 8-0 run for Texas Tech. Last lead, 526 gone in the first half. Perry steps on the baseline. Wow. Wow. What an eye from the referee right there to be able to see that. And if you're Kansas State, you just can't have those turnovers. This game is too close. If Kansas State loses this game, it will be because of the turnovers, not only that they had in the first half, but towards the end of the game down the stretch. They have to clean that up. But nonetheless, you're still in the game, so you got to get this stop right here. Isaacs, good look from the corner. Can't get it to fall. Big offensive rebound by Williams. Basketball's poked out. Kansas State with possession. Perry, who has been clutched this season for Kansas State, draws contact and will go to the free throw line. He's so crafty. Coming off the pick and roll, when he gets to the paint, you have to be aware of his head fakes, his pass fakes, because he will get you in the air. And as soon as he sees you leave your feet, he is jumping right into you. Because we talked about him earlier. He doesn't have that blow by speed to be able to get by defenders. So he's good with his body, and he's extremely crafty in the paint area. Has struggled in the second half. No better place to rectify problems like that than the free throw line. Perry hit a game winner this year earlier when Kansas State played Villanova at home. And at the University of North Texas, 
He was clutch personified. Coach McCasin will tell you that. Yeah, that game winner, he didn't feel nobody had that game. That that thing was disgusting. The snatch back to the game. Oh, my goodness. It was nasty. But just, best believe, if the game comes down to that, the ball will be in his hands. Tucson says, right now, it's in mine. Gets the whole wow. team to jump and finishes. Joe Tucson says, this is my city. Wow. You want to talk about crafty when they get into the lane. Tyler Perry did it on one side, but Joe Toussaint saying, I can do it better than you can. This is tough. He's only six foot people, but look at him. Three defenders down there somehow has the strength to be able to go over him, get the foul, and one. That right there is toughness. That is what you want to see out of your point guard. An absolute dog. 88% from the free throw line, no doubt about that one. Texas Tech leads again. Man, Pete, this is why we love Big 12 basketball. This is exactly why we love the Big 12. The crowd in Lubbock agrees. I like this matchup right here, one on one, Toussaint Perry. 12 on the game clock, 12 on the shot clock. Coach Tang wants to talk it over. And I think you wasted a little too much time dribbling around the perimeter instead of putting pressure on the Texas Tech defense. But I'm interested to see what Coach Tang draws up out of this timeout. Okay, now that game winner against Villanova, Coach Tang has gone on record saying it was drawn up for Cam Carter. Mm -hmm. Carter was able, again, you were at the game, was able to get the ball to Perry, who liked the mismatch, step back, Jumper, what do you do here? Yeah, I think it's the same thing. You've seen Tyler Perry hit big shot after big shot. There's no reason why you don't go to him right now. You've seen him do it in the clutch. You trust him because he's proven himself. Go out here and do it again. You have to put the ball in Tyler Perry's hands. He's hit at least two game winners this season. There's no other person, no other option on this team to go to than Tyler Perry right now in this moment. Coach Tang in his second season at Kansas State. Talking it over. And the crowd here has been looking for a reason to explode all afternoon long. And they have gotten one here over the course of the last five minutes. Texas Tech has made four of their last five field goals. On the other side of that, for Kansas State, if they're able to score a field goal here, that would break a three minute and 14 second scoring drought. So if you were paying strict attention, you saw the clock wind down. They are going to reset it. So the operator hit the wrong button when it comes to time on the clock. So the reset is still continuing. And it'll be side out for Kansas State. They've got 7.7 .7 seconds left right now on the game clock. Shot clock is turned off at the moment. Now we got a point seven seconds on the shot clock. Yeah, the biggest thing right now for Texas Tech, if Kansas State gets this shot up within three or four seconds, the second shot will hurt worse than the first. The offensive rebounds. Remember, Kansas State is a top 25 team in offensive rebound. They crash, they crash the glass extremely hard. Shot clock at seven seconds. Who else? Here's Tyler Perry. Dribbles behind his back into the lane. The step back. Wide right. Ball is knocked out of bounds. Now, it would appear that Texas Tech has the victory. However, the clock did not start 